Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Gillen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 112, Address of the Matching Cell. All right, Carlos from Portugal has this question. He wants to find an exact match for a numerical value within the matrix and retrieve the cell reference. Uh, now, I think he means the cell address. Uh, so I'm uh, thinking about this here and I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to switch over to VBA and see if I can write a user defined function that will, uh, I, I'll pass it this number, I'll pass it this array and um, it'll tell me the address of the match. All right, so in VBA that was Alt F11 to get the VBA insert module. I'll just call this function where is and I'm going to pass it uh, look for comma look in. Those are going to be the two arguments. We'll say for each cell in look in, if cell dot value is equal to look for, then uh, where is is equal to cell dot address. And at that point, we can uh, exit the loop. We don't have to keep checking anymore. Next cell. All right. And then what should we do if there's nothing found? We need to kind of initialize where is is equal to uh, n a. All right, let's give it a try here. Equal where is this value within this array? Press enter B16. There we go. Let's try another one. We'll put it in 1711 is in F20. There you go, Mike. I'm gonna love to. I'm sure you're gonna write some formula that's gonna make my head spin. Uh, so let's see it. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, uh, you're the one making my head spin. That VBA, oh, it's making my head spin. And it's so much easier than what I'm about to do. Look at that. Where is? All right, we'll come over here. Um, here's our matrix. Now, there's two ways we could do this. We could use the address function, which means if we were looking up 16, we uh, this number 61 here. We'd need a row 16 and second column. If we were using the index function to look up a cell reference, we'd need the relative position, which would be 4 and 2. Let's look at just the condition. Entire matrix, anything in there equal to 61. That'll give us a bunch of trues and falses. Only one true. There are no duplicates ever in this data set. We could simply multiply that times, hey, the row function. Now we can highlight this entire matrix. And we might think that it would give us a bunch of row numbers, but it's only it's it's going to be efficient if I highlight this and hit F9, you can see, oh, it gives me just a 13, not a bunch of 13. So this is a different dimension than that array of trues and falses. No problem. When we multiply these two things, boom, we get a 16, the row number all the rest are zeros. Now I can simply, since I need that number, I could wrap it in sum function. I'm going to put it in sum product. By the way, we cannot, we're, we're putting this Boolean multiplying into the single argument here. We can't split this apart here because they're different dimensions and sum product requires that they're the same dimension. Now I'm going to copy control C. The way we get around the different dimensions is by doing the multiplying, right? Now for column, I'm simply going to do the same thing, but here I'm going to put column, and there it will give me the column. Now I can come down here, and then actually I'm going to copy both of these control CC to open up the clipboard, escape, and then copy this control C. Now I come over here and do the address function. Hey, where's the row number? Boom, there it is. Comma, where's the column number? Boom, there it is. The type of reference I want, I want to show it as a relative cell reference, so I'm putting 4. There's B16. Now, what if we wanted to actually add from this position all the way up to the first? Then if we change this number right to 6629, we'd add from the very top corner all the way down to that. Well, we could simply you take this address, which is text, and convert it back to a reference using indirect function. Indirect function takes text that represents a reference and converts it back to a reference. Now I'm going to say A13. I'm sitting in A13 up. I mean, that's the top corner. So uh, A13 colon double quotes and join it. Now check this out. 
If I highlight all this indirect, boom, it's getting from there all the way down to here. When I change this input, this range will change, a dynamic range. Now I'm simply going to put sum around this. And guess what? I can just hit Enter. That uh, will not require Control-Shift-Enter. Now what if we wanted to do this with index? The one drawback to indirect is it's, that it's volatile, right? If we could look up the cell reference, uh, then we could avoid that indirect. The only problem is we have to take both of these things. And instead of giving it just the row number, we have to say, hey, take all those rows and then subtract the row. And we'll take the very first one. So 13 minus 13 would be uh, 0. And we don't want that to start our array of uh, relative positions. So we add one back in. All right, so this will give us right here F9, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so now when I, it gives me relative position 4. So we took with that little bit from just the row numbers to relative position. So we do the same thing now for the column. And I'm going to double click that and type COL tab, double click COL tab. All right, so now we have those two things. Guess what? Now we put them, these two things into the index. And we can actually look up a cell reference. Now the way that works is you actually have to have the, well, let's do the index. All right, here's the whole array. Broop. Comma, and then the row number, that one. Comma, the column number, that. Now guess what? Right now, index is going to do its thing. It's going to look up that, which is totally useless. But recognize that it is doing a two-way lookup, right? Row and column number within this larger matrix. But as soon as we put the index function into the context, oops, it's 13, into the context of a cell reference, now index says, oh, now I should be a cell reference because of that colon. So now when I highlight this in F9, boom, there's that same dynamic range. We can simply put this into the sum. And so there we go. Now let's try it. 6629, and boom. We can even come over here and highlight from 6629 up and look down in our uh, status bar here. And sure enough, there's that number. Absolutely amazing. All right, uh, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Mike, that is absolutely wild. OK, so we have the index function, the index of the matrix. I get that. This sum product figures out the row, the relative row. This sum product figures out the column using the Boolean multiplication. Uh, then, at the very end, you throw in this obscure fact that you can do sum of A13 to the colon of that whole big formula, and the thing works. That is incredible, absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, so for those of you who have been watching Dueling Podcasts for a, a long time, I would always go to VBA and Mike would always go to a formula. That was the traditional way. Uh, but since Mike started working on Control-Shift-Enter, uh, you will have noticed that his formula answers have just gone through the roof. Absolutely amazing. I can't wait for this book to arrive. I want to thank everyone for stopping by this week. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel. And Excel is fun.